What's up, guys? It's your boy Brandon, aka Mr. Card by himself. So excited that you stopped in to hear me talk my noise and give you uh, information on the most incredible diet in the world, the carnivore diet. You know, um, things that I teach in my system, the Built by Carnivore system. And uh, again, just so excited that you're here. I want to talk to you a little bit about the carnivore mindset and uh, and how I had to change my mind about food and about eating in order to be successful on this journey. Those of you who watched my first video, uh, you'll know that I was 207 pounds, seven pounds, 207, when I started this journey back in J January 22nd of 2023 of this year, okay? I was 207 pounds, and I made the decision to go on the carnivore diet as my way of healing the issues that I had, the, the, high, the high cholesterol, the uh, reflux, uh, the, the vocal nodules and um, the sleep apnea that I had. See, it, it's gone, so I have to remember what I had. Oh, anyway, um, I shared all of that stuff. I had I had a lot of things going on, guys, and I decided to use the carnivore diet to get healthy and to lose the weight. And one of the things that I had to do was learn how to change my mind as it pertains to food and what it meant to eat, what it meant to be hungry. You have to realize that we live in, the, those of you who are watching in the United States of America, at least, I live in a country that is full of abundance. We have everything we need. We got all the water we need, all the food that we need. We got all the cars and ways of transportation. We have incredible homes. We have doctors and schools and uh, just you know crazy vacation places and whatnot. There's an overabundance of anything that you could want in this country. And so in our minds, we have been taught, we have been conditioned that as much of anything that you want, you can have. And I applied that to food. Now, people who looked at me, would have never said, oh, Brandon is this just, he's this obese, nasty, sloppy guy. And I'm not trying to be offensive to anybody. He's this obese, nasty, sloppy guy. Nobody would have ever said that at all. But what I do know is that I enjoyed food just like the next person. And I loved to eat. And I love to eat all kinds of food. First of all, I'm from Louisiana. And originally, I was born in Louisiana. And so I just love, love, love good food, man. Gumbo jambalaya, fried chicken, red beans, and rice, and okra, and shrimp, and smothered potatoes, and sausage, and cornbread, and boudin, and um, the pork chops, and just the whole gambit, Kool-Aid, sweet tea, sweet lemonade. I love it all. Not just that, McDonald's. I know some of y'all like, that's disgusting. Oh, McDonald's, give me two hot and spices, only ketchup, only pickles, a large fry, and a, the largest Coke Zero that you could possibly pour for me. I love it. Go to Jack in the Box. Give me 10 of those two for a dollar tacos, and I will destroy those disgusting things. You know, I remember me and my friend Jessica, we would leave from singing sometimes. We'd get off at like 1.30 in the morning. We'd go to Jack in the Box, and Jack in the Box had those tiny tacos, and uh, you get like 15 tiny tacos, and you can get them loaded with the queso on it, and the sauce, and the jalapenos, and the, the lettuce, and Ah, it was just so, 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 so good. So guys, listen, I could eat with the best of them. And I, I had to realize that, number one, because we have so much access to food, we never really notice how much food we're eating and how often we're eating when we're eating the things that we are. And so I had to retrain myself, number one, that eating is about living first and enjoyment second, okay? The problem that most people have, especially those who are extremely unhealthy, those who are obese, those who are fighting diabetes, I'm not talking about juvenile diabetes, I'm talking about folks that have developed diabetes over time. What most people don't realize is that we're addicted to food. We're addicted to the food that we eat. 
most of the things that we have that we're consuming are just just doused and injected with sugar and high fructose corn syrup and and corn starch and potato starch and soy and msg and just whatever and little by little bite by bite day by day we're becoming more and more and more and more addicted so one of the things that i really had to realize and dr silas um the, I, I will even put his video in in the description but dr silas he was talking about being addicted to carbs and how most people, especially those people in America, people in America are addicted to carbohydrates. And, but you have to realize that food is one of the only things that people have no control of when it comes to you being an adult. People can tell you when you need to get to work. People can tell you when your rent's due. People can tell you, you know, when you need to go to the doctor and all that stuff. But man, when you get home, you can eat as much food as you want, whatever kind of food that you want, whatever time that you want, for however long that you want, and you can do it again if you want to. We go to food for everything. And growing up, especially in church and then working in church as an adult, everything revolved around food. You wake up, have breakfast with your coworkers. You, you uh, get to the noontime and you go to lunch with your coworkers. Uh, after church on Sunday, where do you go? To eat. Uh, after church on Wednesday, where do you go? To eat. Uh, when you're getting ready to have a meeting with somebody, what is the main thing that people want to do when they meet? They want to eat. When you have friends coming in town, what's the main thing that people are concerned about? What are we going to eat? So our lives, mine especially, revolved around food. I would eat one meal wondering what I was going to eat for the next meal. You hear what I'm saying? My life revolved around food. And so one of the things that I had to learn again was that eating is about living first and enjoyment second, okay? Dr. Cyrus said this about an, an addiction. When, it, when, when something goes from pleasure to pain and you don't care about it, that's an addiction. When the enjoyment of that food goes from I really love this food to man, I have now I got diabetes, now I got high blood pressure, high cholesterol, sleep apnea, whatever, but I'm still gonna eat this. I have a very unhealthy, a very abusive relationship with food now. And so I, 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 had, to, I had to be honest with myself and I had to take that on for myself and say, hey, that's you and you need to make a change. And the incredible thing about the carnivore diet is that unlike any other diet that I've ever done, I was always hungry on all those other diets. I was always, always, always hungry because those diets stressed restriction. On this diet, on this way of eating, you are restricting yourself, but not in how much you eat, but in what you're eating. I cut the carbohydrates out, and I mean every carbohydrate. I don't care if it was cake or broccoli, didn't matter. We, I cut it all out and I went on a high fat, probably moderate protein, high cholesterol, high sodium diet is essentially what that was. I'm not a doctor, so I'm probably not saying it right, but that's essentially what it was. I ate a, a lot of fat, a lot of butter, a lot of eggs with a lot of cholesterol, a lot of red meat, a lot of pork, a little bit of chicken, a little bit of seafood here and there, a little bit of turkey, but mainly pork and beef were my portion and eggs and butter and salt. And the cool thing about consuming food like that is that you become so satiated that the feelings of hunger start to dissipate, y'all. And so now for the first time while I was trying to get healthy, I had found a way to eat to where I was not starving waiting for my next meal every single time. And guys, I'm telling you, if it were not for how eating the carnivore way made me feel, guys, the hunger pains left. The cravings left. My stomach wasn't even growling anymore, guys. And so, again, I realized it. it helped solidify for me that eating did not have to be this huge emotional event all the time, that I could eat 
because I was hungry and because my body requires food as fuel and energy. And then when I was done, guys, I stopped eating. And then if I got ready to eat again, I would eat again. And if I wanted a little snack, I could snack on real food. I didn't have to go get candies and cookies and cakes and pies and all of those things. I didn't have to go get fruits. Guys, I love fruit. Apples and oranges and bananas and strawberries and kiwis and pineapples and grapes. I love all of those things, but I realized that I did not need it. And for the first time in my life, I had gained control over my eating habits because I changed my relationship with eating and my relationship with food. But it would not have been possible if I would have been starving for those three months. Because I had given myself three months to, to just completely pop it. And again, I, I reached my goal. I started in January 22nd. I reached my, I, not my goal, but I had got down by 60 pounds by April 1st. So that was about 70 days. And I had cured the sleep apnea and the reflux and the inflammation and the cholesterol the first week of the diet. So I had reached a lot of milestones and had, had, had come up with a lot of goals uh, really quick into, the, in, into this process. But I would not have been able to stick with it had I been starving the entire time. Eating this way curbed my appetite tremendously. And of course, now here I am almost 70 pounds lighter. The amount of food that it takes for me to live on and survive on is dramatically lower than what it used to be. And even that's a testament because I, again, I understand that eating is about life and then enjoyment. The good thing is that I enjoy what I eat. Doesn't matter if it's ribs, doesn't matter if it's pork chops, doesn't matter if it's turkey wings, doesn't matter if it's chicken wings, doesn't matter if it's shrimp. I enjoy the food that I eat. But when I am full, I'm done. And I leave it alone until it's time for me to eat again. And my body, not my mind. When your mind says it's time to eat, it's a lie. Your mind is never right when it comes to eating. I allow my body to tell me when it is time to eat. And that really, really helps me uh, get my relationship with eating and with food in line and bring it under subjection. Because I realize, man, how weak am I if I can't even control the things that I'm putting in my mouth and consuming on a daily basis? What am I? How low had I allowed myself to become? Okay, so I want to encourage you guys, those of you who are thinking about starting this journey and those of you who have started this journey, I want you to realize that you're going to have to change your thoughts and your philosophy around food and why we eat it, when we eat it, how we eat it, and what we are eating. You are not going to undereat. You are not going to starve yourself, okay? You weren't worried about overeating. So stop buying into the hype that you are going to undereat and starve yourself. Stop listening. I'm getting into something totally different now. But stop listening to people who are telling you all of these things. They don't know. They ain't never done it. So stop taking advice and listening, listening to and giving credence to the opinions of other people who wouldn't even last two days or even give a week of effort to try to do what you're doing, okay? Change your relationship with food. Change your mind about food. Food is about life first and enjoyment second, okay? It's your boy Brandon, aka Mr. Carnivore. It's so, 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 so much of an honor for me to be able to bring these videos to you, share with you my journey because it changed my life and I believe it can change your life too. If you'll do me a favor, man, like this. Subscribe to my channel and share it with people that you believe uh, need to hear what I have to say. Because again, it changed my life and I believe that it can change yours too. My name is Brandon, aka Mr. Carnivore. Stick around. I'll teach you how to eat right so that you'll be able to live right. Take care.